Hey, hey, Sanford here. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about self-esteem as a, as a part of a wonderful cheerleading tour that I'm doing called The Cheerleader I Am. But I'm coming back to that in just a few minutes, and I just want to share with you that over the next few months, I will be sharing with you stories and insights from this cheerleading series that I just spoke about called The Cheerleader I Am. Now, this is a series that is based on a cheerleading-inspired book that I'm currently writing, which is called Be You First. And it is also designed around the tour that I'm doing and creating. Now, this is not a... Um, a um, rules and regulation or skills workshop. It's actually a master class on helping to educate, motivate, and inspire your athletes and your coaches. Some of the things that we will be focusing on, well, there are three main things. There are three main things that I am really passionate about, and that's the holistic cheerleading culture, team habits and dynamics, and of course, the whole athlete. I'm all about the whole athlete. There's so much more to an athlete than just their skills and you know whether or not they're popular or not. And I really want to dive into that. Some of the things that we will touch on in the tour. Now, when I do the tour, coaches and, and team leaders are more than welcome because I covered 22 things that, that, in, in the actual tour. And not everything may pertain to a, a gym or a club. So they're welcome to choose exactly what they want out of the program. But some of the things that I will be covering are things like confidence versus arrogance. We'll look at bullying because that happens everywhere we go. It happens in the workplace. It happens at school. It happens in cheerleading clubs and programs. You know, it's something that we really can't deny, even though a lot of clubs, a lot of parents, even students, they try to, um, to avoid it. But it happens. We'll also look at preparation versus expectation. Another topic that we look at is effective communication and self-esteem. Now we're back to self-esteem, so let me dive into that a little bit. Okay, so first of all, um, I've looked up a couple of meanings on what self-esteem is. So here, it says self-esteem um, is a self, what does it say, a, a self evaluation and attitude of self and if we are worthy. Now another um, self-esteem version that I looked up, it said self-esteem is a particular way of experiencing self. It's more complex than any mental picture of ourselves and more basic than any transitory feeling. It contains emotions, um, evaluations and cognitive components. So th that reminds me, you know, back to when I was um, about nine or ten, I had these friends in my life because, you know, part of this self worth thing and this self esteem thing is knowing how to to set boundaries in our life. Now, boundaries is a, is a word that a lot of people use today and they just throw it around willy nilly. So what that what boundaries mean to me is that we're able to look in ourselves and see how something feels to us, see how something needs to be said from us and by us and through us. So I look at it that way. I don't, I don't, I don't you know, there is low self-esteem. I definitely believe that people have low self-esteem because I've been there. Anyway, let me tell you the story. When I was about nine or ten you know, I had these friends that used to love to, to box, you know, but I wasn't a big boxer. I didn't like, you know, boxing. But what I did like is I did like martial arts because if you know me, you know, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. I love Bruce Lee. And, um, but my friends used to box all the time and they, they you know, they love to get you in a corner and just box and jab at you and, you know, and so one-on-one, -on -one, they really couldn't handle me because I was so into Bruce Lee. I not only had my hands working, but I had my feet working. And so they used to team up on me, you know, double team me, triple team me, you know, and then eventually, you know, I'd be the one on the floor crying and, you know, in, in, in a mess. So I had to decide. I had to decide what I wanted to do about that and what I needed to say to my friends because 
you know, when your friends hang out, you do a lot of silly stuff. You do things that you just you just keep doing it, not recognizing that the other person may be in pain or, you know, in the long term, getting these scars about being bullied or, or ganged up on. So what I decided to do was to take each one of them one by one and kick their butts. No, I'm just joking. I didn't kick their butts, <laughs> you know. Um, what I decided to do with each one of them, and uh, I decided to talk to them and let them know exactly what was going on. Now, out of these eight friends, you know, about six of them were like, you know, they're really cool, but two of them just said, you know, you're just being a wussy, you know, you're just being weak. But I recognized that the feeling that, that, that I was having from them bullying up on me, um, I didn't want to have that anymore. So I had an option to do something about that. And because I am the sort of person to believe that the people in your life are there for specific reasons, specific lessons. And I wrote about this in my first book called Do You Live On Purpose? Um, which the section is, who are the teachers in your life? So who are the people that are in your life for, you've heard that, that, that um, analogy, season, reason, lifetime. And <clears throat> people come in and out of our lives. But I believe that they're there to teach us lessons. So I believe that each one of those friends were there to teach me a lesson. So I wanted to be able to share that with them. I didn't just want to be able to cut them off. I mean, you know, I, that's, that's not my flow. I'm a huge believer in, in sticking with things. A huge believer in sticking with things, you know. And it makes no difference. You know, I could goof up on something, mess up on something, <clears throat> and people want to run. And, you know, I would try to still communicate with them and talk to them so we can figure out why these particular moments happen to us. And even in situations where I felt like I want to run, you know, because, you know, for me, uh, if situation is too heavy or too hard, I have to step back. You know, I have to kind of go into my man cave or into my bat cave, I call it, you know, and, and, and really um, chill out on it and think about it, uh, reflect on it to see how it sits inside of me. I have to really feel it. Okay, I really want to feel it. I don't just want to react because when you just react, you don't really get to the crux of what's going on for people. I'm not saying don't. Don't don't have your emotions. Don't be emotional about things because emotions are natural. You know, they're like passing weather. They come and they go and, you know, some feel good and, and some don't. But if there's something that's really heavy, something that's really serious, something that I really want to dive into, which is the same aspect that I bring to every cheerleading program that I go in and I work with. This self-esteem, the self-worth thing, it needs to be talked about. It needs to be addressed. And you can only run from it for so long. You can only push it away for so long. You can only blame other people for so long before you have to step into your own power, which you are an endless, <laughs> you are an endless magnet and an endless um, giver of this self-esteem. And, you know, like, like it said here, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's more than any transitory feeling. So it's not just a passing feeling. You know, it contains all your emotions and your, how you evaluate and your cognitive um, uh, components as well. You know, so it's very important to know that your experiences are part of your self-esteem and your self-worth. Um, whether you were rejected a lot, whether you were abused, whether you... Um, traveled a lot, whether you read a lot, um, whether you're an actor or, in our case, cheerleaders, you know, it's, it's easy to hide behind your feelings. It's easy to hide behind your skills. You know, for, for me, when I learned that I could write poetry and that I had dancing skills, all this stuff started happening when I was around 13, 14, 15. I started exploring my poetry writing, my dancing skills. And by the time I was 18, you know, I discovered that I could do flips, you know, it was like a pretty amazing thing. So that's how I would perform for people, not, not talking about my emotions and feelings, which would have got me to that point of really connecting with them. You know, I connected with them because they were in, in awe of me, or we connected because we both had flips that we could do and we both loved theater. But there still was a deeper connection to help us grow to that next level and to really accept each other for who we were and, and the reasons we are in each other's lives because I do believe that we are in people's lives for a particular reason and you know I, I have debates with people <clears throat> that say you know you can't force a friendship you can't force relationships you know so why why put it in the box or say that that person is there for a specific reason simply because we attract 
<laughs> we attract what we're thinking and feeling and what, what and that that we need. And like this, this next book that I'm writing, Be You First, and this tour that I'm doing, to me is the perfect time to do it. It's been calling me for so long, and now I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I have the resources, and, and I, I have this insatiable passion to give back, to give back, to give back. So, you know, back to my story, I talked to my, my friends, two of them didn't want to really accept that. So over time, they slowly made their, their way out of my life. And, um, you know, I think about all my friends all the time and all the many lessons that we had together. But I think it's very important that you're able to say what you need from people and to be able to open up about really what's going on for you. That helps to build your self-esteem and your self-worth. If you, if you keep avoiding, if you keep running from it, it's going to keep haunting you. You know, as I said before, life gives tests. And if you fail the test, you're going to have to do it again. You know, there's no need of thinking that you're going to get into a relationship that's destructive um, for you or for them. You know, you can't just look at it on one side. Everyone brings, you know, two into a relationship. And uh, if you keep running from that or keep avoiding that and you find another relationship, it's going to come up again. And it's going to come up again. It's going to come up again. You know, if you are an athlete and you're going from one gym hopping, doing gym hops from one gym to the next, you know, for whatever reason, you're still going to have to face those issues in the next gym. And you're still going to have those issues with that athlete or athletes that you had in that last gym. So what I'm saying is listen to that self that wants to open up and share really what's going on with you. And I can guarantee you that once you start doing that, there'll be no stopping you because you'll be able to open up and share with people, not just out of anger or ego or revenge. You know, this world is so much, the world is so full of negative negativity nowadays and it's so isolated and you know it's it's easy just to complain or tell someone that they suck get out of my life but the road less traveled that's the road where the growth takes place and that's the road where you open up resistance that's the road where you open up you open up deep 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 connections deep love deep relationships Folks, um, I want to thank you guys very much for listening me, to me today. Um, now, I just want to also end with this. If you want more information about my book, Be You First, or about the tour, you can contact me on cheersportedme.com, and uh, I'd be happy to talk to you face-to-face, -face, uh, on the phone, on the internet. Love to have a conversation with you. And um, I want you to ensure that if you... Uh, enjoyed this video that you leave your comments below if you have um, uh, things that you want to talk about self-esteem if your coaches out there can you tell me some of these stories and some of the issues you've had with athlete self-esteem and if you're an athlete tell me some of the things that you struggle with and some of the things you may see in, in, in your coaches and your surrounding crowd your friends and your family that look like self-esteem issues love to hear from you guys and gals thank you very much for listening today and as always Love your mission. Peace. <laughs>